It was, I was coming into the position of being president-elect of the American Bar Association, and I thought it was incumbent upon me to learn and try to figure out as much as I could about the justice delivery, delivery of justice and how we could improve it. And I was startled to find out how, how little I knew about these shifting sands, how little I knew about these technology companies that were emerging, how they were affecting the change in the delivery of legal services. And I didn't really understand and fully appreciate the scope of the, and the extent of the justice gap in our country. And so it was really an epiphany for me, and I recognized and I, and I believed that the organized bar was behind the curve and that we as an American Bar Association and state and local bars needed to really get up to speed as quickly as we could so that we could help lead the change and not be overrun by change. And picking up on that as a legal educator, as someone who's training uh, the next generation of lawyers and seeing the challenges that they're facing in the legal marketplace, I wanted to make sure that they have the skills and knowledge that they need to succeed. And that really led me to think more deeply about what exactly are those skills. Uh, and I, I would be hesitant to, uh, I think probably the only thing that I can predict with a great amount of certainty is continued and dramatic change. And, and what lawyers need to be prepared for is adaptability. And maybe a bit more specifically than that, um, I believe we will see law firms emerge uh, that are some blend of technology companies and law firms. I think you'll start to see the delivery of legal services through a combination of some internet-based platform where people populate forms and, and submit the basic information and then there's consultation through Skype and FaceTime and other ways to communicate more efficiently and then lawyers will be part of the process but some of the more um, mundane parts of the gathering the data I think we'll see that done through more self-help mechanisms using the technology that's available now, and I think that will lower the cost of legal services. So some combination of an internet uh, technology company, internet-based platform with lawyers involved, I think is, a, is an emerging model. Yeah, that, that's a good answer. I think this idea that where we used to be, or there were lawyers over here and there was everybody else over there, we're seeing a kind of blurring of the lines of what lawyers do and what others do, and I think that uh, that line is going to be increasingly blurred over time, and the collaboration that's going to be necessary uh, is, is only going to grow, so I think William's exactly right. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that's just the, the beginning of what's in store in terms of how services are going to be delivered. There's a motto for a, for a firm in Chicago, and it said it's bringing law to the living room. And the basic fact gathering is done through Skype and FaceTime. And what that entity has determined is that people are more open and more comfortable, and they're not as intimidated when they can simply sit in their living room and communicate through that vehicle. And you get a lot more information. Virtual law firms are becoming increasingly common, and that helps to drive down the cost of, of legal services too, because if you don't have to pay for a fancy brick and mortar operation, and you can operate a, a law firm out of your house and connect with people virtually, uh, that can go a long way to keeping costs down and serving the public. Well, I do think that, that bar associations particularly have an important role in educating the public about their rights and responsibilities. And I think through um, public interest ads and, and, and speaking to different groups and going to assisted living facilities and, and speaking at civic clubs and, and just generally raising the awareness of, of what is out there is important because Becky Sandifer's research at the American Bar Foundation found that 80% of the people do not have access, particularly the poor, don't have access to legal services, primarily because they do not recognize legal issues as legal issues. I just want to say thank you for the hospitality of the New Hampshire Bar. This has been wonderful, and I was, again, so impressed by the inquisitiveness of the group and the willingness to, to listen to the message and try to uh, see how they can adapt. It's, it's so gratifying to see how, what an important role the court is providing with the chief and, and her predecessor and um, all the members of the judiciary whom I met. They, they know we need to do something to improve our justice system and make it more accessible. 
and that's that's an important step.